Good news, bad news. The bad news is, Bugsy no longer lives in the next door neighbour's garage. The good news is, Bugsy no longer lives in the next door neighbour's garage and I can get to work. Well, that was inches from disaster. Okay, what are we doing today? Bumpers. Let me show you what we've got to play with and then we'll try and figure out how we're going to attach them somehow. We'll start with the front, since, you know, since I just drove it onto the ramps. Well, I almost drove it over the ramps, but you probably saw that. Okay, let me dig them out and I'll run you through the plan that I'm making up as we go along. These are my bumpers, generously donated by Gary. Gary's car stuff, link at the end of the video and in description, thanks Gary. As you can see, one of them is quite chromey, one of them is not quite so chromey. And I will probably grind them down and clear coat whatever metal is underneath. But I'm not gonna do that until I've got them fitted. Well, till I know where they're fitting because I'll end up getting them all smudged because you know I'll never wait for the paint to dry so let's make sure they fit first and then we'll decide well we'll decide which one's going front and back I said in a previous video that these bumpers were the same but one is slightly more curved than the other so I need to decide if I want the curved one on the front or the back I think the curved one in the back because the front is definitely a bit straighter across than the one at the back than the area at the back so we'll give it a shot, we'll line them up and see which one works. So this is the slightly straighter one. It's also the more chromey one. Now, it does stick out quite a bit from the front. I can't decide if I want to straighten this some more or just have it that further out. I know that they generally did originally place them quite far out. I'm just not used to it being quite so gappy, you know. I'm not sure. I mean, that's extending the length, the yeah, the length of the car by about a foot front and back. Let me think about that one. Okay, I reviewed the video that you just saw and it doesn't look that bad from a distance. In fact, it looks fine. So I think I'll just press ahead, remove the fog lights, remove the number plate and try and figure out where I'm going to put the, the brackets, the beams, whatever they're called, the extenders. I'm going to attach them to the frame. Uh, attaching to the bumper is not a problem, I can figure that out, but I need to find somewhere solid for them to attach to the frame. Let's do that. You know what? We might have got lucky with this. Let me show you. My plan was always to use some of this bar to ram in those holes and attach it to the frame and then attach the bumper to these somehow. But these brackets that I made for the fog lights are actually pretty solid. So, and I've got holes in them. So what I'm thinking, if I cut an angle corresponding to that angle there, 
and then this will slide forward and jam against that and then get some beefy, beefy bolts to attach there to extend this out and then I can make plates. Good thing about this is it's only very slightly lower than the height that I want the bumper so I can adjust the height of the bumper from the this side. Obviously it's not going to stick out that far, that would just be crazy japanese -y. Quite literary, or is it Koreans that do that? Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. There's a word for those cars. So I could mount it that high, or I could put in spacers and mount it up there. Or I could or I could bend those actually and bring it right up. I've got options. But the good thing is I've got a good starting point. So let me see what I can come up with. And then we'll start fabricating. Right, I've hatched a plan. Now, it might seem overly complicated, but those bars I showed you uh, for the that are attached to the chassis, they're also holding the radiator up, and I just don't want to mess with them too much. Whole can of worms. I don't want to have to... What's the word? I don't want to... What is the word? Hold on a second. I can't think of the word. I don't want to disturb those brackets. Okay, so what I'm going to create might look a wee bit complicated, but it'll work. So let's go.
Right, I hope you managed to keep up. Let me show you how it all fits together. Well, I hope it does. So you probably saw the little extra bit that I did. Welded a bolt from the inside out, welded that together. So, this goes through that hole at the top, and then this lines up with that one. And then we all just bolt it all together and it should be just perfect. That one goes through there. Little one at the back. This one is really just to stop it going sideways and up and down and you know, all sorts. Oh, I'm missing a washer. Oh no. There it is. I'll tighten the back one up first, make sure we're in the right place. Lovely. Quite as solid as I'd like, but it's solid enough. These bumpers are actually pretty light. The whole point of this is to be a bit of a crumple zone anyway, so it will take a bit of give before it touches my lovely pristine bodywork. Right, let me check the other side. Right, that's my big bumper brackets on. I'm not going to line up the bumper at the moment because I'd rather the car was on the flat, otherwise I might I might have the bumper pointing up to the sky. So let me get it off the ramps and then we'll get on with the next step. So it's actually the next morning, bet you didn't notice. In the interest of continuity, I've kept the same smell of clothes on and I've not even refreshed my deodorant. That's professionalism. Right, let me grab a bumper. That looks about right. So I could use these bumper brackets that Gary gave me somehow. I would need to butcher them and I just think that's kind of a shame. Someone else could probably use these the way they are. So instead of wasting a perfectly good bit of vintage machinery, vintage equip, vintage stuff, I'm going to use some of this I think it's three sixteenths plate steel. We'll just cut a couple of strips, bend it into shape, drill some holes, drill some holes first actually. Much easier to drill a flat piece of steel on that than the... Sorry, it's early. I'm not quite awake yet. I've only had three coffees. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm going to cut this into shape, bend it, attach it or something. I don't know. BFH. This is going to get ugly. I'll see you when it's done, okay? Behold my bracketry. Let's go and stick them in the car. Actually, before I can put them in the car, I need to bolt them to the bumper. And then I'll clamp it onto the, the new extender bars, 
when it's in the right place I'll tack them on and then I'll take the bumper off then I'll weld these on or something so let's make sure they fit first passenger side oh I don't know which way round it is oh. I'll see you at the front of the car okay I figured it out So I need to clamp it onto this and then I can tack it on in place. check that from the front did a wee bit of tweaking it's not perfect but then the car's not perfect I think that'll do it's not too close I don't want it rattling the front fenders as long as it's kind of similar at each side as I say, it does stick out a fair bit, but I've still to mount the fog lights and number plate, so I need to, I need to sort all that out. Meanwhile, let's get it welded in. It's a bit bouncy. Might have to add a bit of structure to the frame in the underside, the bracket in the underside. It's in the right place though. Well, there we go then. One front bumper. It's not in pristine condition, but neither is the car. I think it suits it quite nicely, actually. I will definitely need to reinforce the structure behind there because it's, as I say, it was a bit. Uh, bouncy it just needs a bit of a, a gusset either top or bottom just to strengthen that up the more that bounces up and down the more likely it is of you know breaking and falling off which would be a bit of a disaster overall though it's quite nice oh i suppose i need to figure out where my fog lights are going to go let me grab one and we'll see because we get so much fog here in Southern Ontario. <laughs> anyway, I think I'll probably make a little bracket on there, but maybe out there a little bit. Well done. I don't know, it'd be nice to cover that big hole there. So I could make a little U-shape bracket and it could mount up here. Same on the other side, obviously. And I think the license plate can go back where it was, but maybe just a little bit higher so that the bumper doesn't obscure it from the, the police. I know the police will want to Make sure I'm legal and all that. Even more legal now that I've got bumpers on it. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And that's all that matters, right? So now all I have to do is take it all off again, clean it all up, 
paint those bars. Don't want them getting rusty and ruining the look. Put it all back on again on adding a bit of structure. Oh, fairly success. Oh, got the back end to do as well. Another day. All right, before I go, um, thank you very much to my latest Patreon membership, uh, Graham. How you doing? Graham's an old friend from Scotland, from the car club days. So thank you very much for that, and everyone else in my Patreon group. I couldn't do this without you guys and everyone else, obviously, that contributes. Much appreciated. And also, obviously, thanks, Gary, for the for the bumpers. I think they look great. Really appreciate that, too. Take care, everyone. See you at the back end soon. <laughs>